Knighthood is something that's earned and given, of course, and um, perhaps one of the most famous rags to riches stories is that of King Arthur. Depending on which story of King Arthur you, uh, you believe is true or less made up, he started out as a humble, ordinary person and either through mystical intervention or uh, prowess in battle, he became legendary King of the Britons. Now, the reality of knighthood is that you were probably born into it and you would have started out as a, a, a page, normally not with your family. Uh, normally you were sent away at about the age of six or seven uh, to another noble household. I think in part because if you were staying at home, you would be treated differently. So you're sent away to somebody else um, and they will treat you a little bit more robustly perhaps. And then you basically do a lot of the menial jobs. You learn the basics of knighthood. You learn to maintain and clean armor and sharpen weapons. Uh, you learn a little bit about horse maintenance and that kind of thing. You don't really start fighting or training to fight until you're around 12 to 14 years old. It would obviously vary with the person and with the culture. But basically, it's a little bit like going to secondary school. You start to uh, do the proper studying and you start to learn the truth behind knighthood. So you would start to do the military training. about 25 kilos of steel. Squires were expected to be able to do athletic feats in harness. They'd be going up and down ladders like this quite a lot of the day. Let's see if I can do it once. Well, actually, as a simulated attack, nobody's throwing anything at me, so I suppose I'm lucky. But it wasn't that difficult to do it just once. Well, it wasn't too difficult. I wouldn't want to be doing it 20 times in a day though. It would certainly build up your fitness. One of the things that squires had to do was lift heavy weights, rocks and things. Well, I decided not to use a rock because it's going to scratch this. And I am my squire when it comes to cleaning my armour and I don't want to have to mend it. So I'm going to try with a hay bale. This hay bale is about 20 to 22 kilos in weight. Let's see what I can do with it. Well, to be honest, it's actually not that difficult. So it's on the ground now. Lift it up, keep the back straight. Lift it, not really a problem. Okay. It's heavy and a bit unwieldy. But I can basically do anything that I can do without armour, I can do it when I'm wearing armour. Knighthood would probably have been given to you by the Lord of your manor or by the monarch um, at the age of roughly 20, 21. The process of knighthood uh, is, is not dissimilar to the uh, educational process we have today but the focus is very different. It would have been a lot more physical training, uh, quite a lot of etiquette and behavior, perhaps learning to read and write, depending on how good you were at that, uh, and how to manage an estate and an economy, and also how to behave. Knighthood was broadly positive. You were at an elevated position in society. You had rights and remedies that were uh, not available to the common person. But it also, there's a high rate of tax that it came with. So in the later medieval period, a lot of people were refusing knighthood because they didn't want to pay more tax. And perhaps these were not necessarily the sort of combat knights as such. There was a, a, quite a group of knights that weren't really that into fighting and they would pay other people to fight for them. But imagine that situation, you have the opportunity to become a knight in armor, but because of the tax rate, you don't take it up. The king needed more knights, so he made a law making people knights against their will. We've covered what it means to become a knight, but that's not the end of the journey. In fact, it's just the end of the beginning of the journey. A young man who's newly knighted now has a whole host of responsibilities and obligations he's got to live up to. 
In the next episode, we're going to investigate those and see what it means to be a knight living in the medieval period. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.